Now from the 12 News I team, one man arrested three different times for the same two murders. It doesn't seem possible, but the I team's Erica Stapleton uncovered a loophole in Arizona's court system that allows this to happen, delaying justice, sometimes for years. And a warning, some of this report might be hard to watch. Caught in a legal loop. I just feel like we're just going in circles. Michelle Rubio is tired of the trauma. He didn't deserve to get his life taken away the way he was. It's hard enough she lost her brother Danny, who was stabbed outside his Phoenix home in 2020. But the case against the man accused of killing him keeps starting over back at the beginning. Where does that leave you as a victim? <laughs> I don't know. Police found suspect Major McKenzie on Danny's block, blood on his belongings and knives strapped to his body. He was arrested on the spot and charged with not only Danny's murder, but the murder of another man found dead in the same neighborhood just a few weeks before. Records reveal Mackenzie had a history of serious mental illness and was in and out of jail, prison, and behavioral health facilities most of his adult life. In the weeks leading up to the murders, the I-team found he was supposed to be getting care. Instead, he wound up on the streets. I do believe if he would have been able to get help, we would not even be having this conversation. This is the suspect's sister, who asked we conceal her identity because she works in health care. The courts, the system that's been put in place to keep all of us safe, including Major, failed. For years, she said her family tried to get him help, but were often kept in the dark, despite wanting to be involved. It becomes a revolving door, not just for Major, but for many, because there's no real services that are consistent in between that. That's not the only problem. After pleading not guilty to the two counts of murder, Major McKenzie's attorney argued he was not competent to stand trial. Court records show Major McKenzie was refusing medication in jail. So in April 2021, the prosecutor asked the judge to force him to take medication. The medication is significantly likely to render this defendant competent. Instead, the judge dismissed the double murder case and ordered Major McKenzie to value wise for a psychiatric evaluation, saying by law, he has to consider the least intrusive option. Feels like they don't know what to do with the case or they just don't want to deal with the case. After Major McKenzie was discharged from Valley Wise in May 2021, he was immediately rearrested and the two murder charges were filed again and again. He was found incompetent and again the state asked the judge to force the defendant to take medication. What do we do if we're back here again in two years and the whole thing has happened again? Do we just keep doing this? I understand the dilemma there. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if it means the law has to change in order to avoid situations such as this. We can't change the law, so your poor client is stuck in this legal eddy, if you will, and he's just going around and around, and we're all doing the two. Even the judge seems stuck in this cycle. The individual liberty interests and not being forced to be medicated is so important that I think we have to try it again. The judge denied the forced medication a second time, ordered Major McKenzie back to Valleywise, and dismissed the murder charges again. Yes, it may put us back on this, this merry-go-round, I don't know. Once again, in August 2023, Major McKenzie was released, rearrested, and charged with the murders for a third time. Did you think all these years later you'd be in this position with the courts? No, I never thought that we would have to be starting a case after case after case against him because it was just going to be dismissed. A lot's changed in the three and a half years this case circled through the courts. Like Danny Rubio's neighbors building a garden in his memory, a place for Michelle to take her family. You know, we get emotional because we wish we had him here. In the latest refiling of the murder charges, there haven't been any requests for competency hearings as of February, but that could always change. Right here, we're going to be planting some flowers. Michelle know. is looking forward to all the growth in this space. I just had to get some chilies into his little garden because he loves spicy food a lot. As the seasons change, well, I'm thinking about also having some red roses. And the murder case starts its own cycle over again. One of the biggest questions that came up in our reporting was whether incompetency could be faked. We take a deep dive into that issue in our full special report tomorrow night on 12 News at 6. We also hear more from the victim's family as well as the suspect's family about how we got to this point and where there were gaps in care. Again, that full special report tomorrow 
on 12 News at 6. For the I-Team, I'm Erica Stapleton, 12 News.